Hi everyone, I'd like to just spend a few minutes this morning introducing to you the topic of energy. Now at first glance it seems like energy is quite an easy thing to talk about. But I just want you to imagine for a minute the situation where you walk into a, a year seven class and uh, you introduce the topic, you say right class we're going to do energy today and immediately somebody puts their hand up and they just says sir miss what is energy? And you have to describe to that child what energy is really, really quickly. Um, at that point, it gets quite difficult. I hope, you, I hope you agree, you know, if you're asked what is energy, it's really hard to think of it an answer. Um, and so I'm going to share with you one analogy, one model, if you like, a scientific model for explaining the concept of energy really quickly now that you can use with, with any class. And the analogy involves using money. If I show you a banknote here, um, on the banknote, this is a £10 note, it says something like, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of £10 signed by the chief cashier of the, for the governor and company of the Bank of England. Now think to yourself for a second, what does this £10 actually mean? Well, nothing in a sense. It's actually virtually worthless. It's all about what it represents, what you can do with it, if you like. So for example, if I take this £10 note down to the coffee shop on the ground floor of the School of Education and I say I'd like a, a cappuccino and a, a ham sandwich for my lunch, um, then they will say, fine, you know, that comes to £4.50 or whatever it comes to, I'll give them my £10 and all will be well. But if I take the same £10 and I go to the Apple store in Birmingham and I say to them, I'd like one of your new iPhones, please, um, and they go, certainly, sir, here it is. And then you go, right, well, there you go. They're going to they're gonna ask security to escort me out because £10 clearly isn't enough to buy an iPhone. So what is money? Well, money represents what you can and can't do to some extent. I can have a cappuccino and a ham sandwich. I can't have an iPhone if I've got 10 pounds. And to some extent, energy is just like that. It is the accounting system of the universe. It tells us in science whether a process can possibly happen or whether it can't. Now obviously energy doesn't even come in, I can't show you some energy like I can show you some money, even though you might argue whether this actually means anything or not. Um, it's a bit more like, I suppose, energy, this type of money, um, credit card type of money, where, you know, this credit card I, I scan or I, I put it in a machine and somewhere in the mysteries of the banking system, numbers appear and disappear off a giant spreadsheet as I, as I pay for things and somehow somebody knows whether I can afford different items, whether I can do different things. Um, energy is much more like that. It tells us what can and can't happen. So for example, if I want to climb a mountain, then it's possible for me to calculate how much energy I will require as a human being to climb a mountain. And if I haven't got enough stored in my body, then I, ju I just won't make it. Or you might think of a chemistry example, like um, a chemical reaction that requires an activation energy. Well, if there isn't enough activation energy, then the reaction just, just won't happen. Um, it, the energy tells us what can and can't happen in that sense. So I hope that's clear. That's a, an analogy that you might use with your students. Um, I found it really helpful and it's not wrong, okay? It's quite simplistic but it relates an abstract concept, energy, to a real concept that students understand, which is money, um, and it introduces them to the right um, sort of conceptual apparatus for thinking, which is that money, the energy is an accounting system and it's all really about the numbers, actually, because energy really is about calculation and numbers when you get right down to it.